my name is Dawn and this is my YouTube channel all about my crafty retirement. For today's episode we've got Sherman. <laughs> um, we've also got some knitting, uh, a small quilting update, uh, some dream sewing and some recipes I want to share with you. Okay let's go. My first finished object is my A-less cardigan by Isabel Kramer. <laughs> I'm really happy with it. Um, I was in progress with it last time we met and um, yeah, it's done. It was actually a fairly quick knit in DK, so that helps all the time. Hi Sherman Wolf, you've decided to join us. Sherman, you've seen him in the videos. Um, yeah, so I decided to knit this uh, cardigan because it's a fairly plain with some really nice lace details. So let me stand up so you can see it in all its glory. It's got the cables right here. They go all the way up. Um, there are pockets. I don't know if you can see see that but there's pockets with cables and the cables go around the back it's a close fitting which is what I wanted and it has a neck that comes up which is also what I wanted because one of my concerns was all my uh, cardigans that have um, wide necks and then I get cold in the winter so it this one turned out to be perfect um, I um, what can I say about the pattern? It's very well written. Isabel Kramer has done a great job in this pattern. It, I didn't have any problems with it. The only thing I did that I do all the time is I added markers um, anytime there was any of the um, lace pattern. So I didn't um, forget to do it because you know, I'm watching TV, I'm not paying attention. Next thing you know, I've gone like seven rows without doing the pattern. So I did do that. Um, I, uh, because it's a cardigan and the body it's knitted flat, um, I, uh, I'm a continental knitter, but I did English pearl back to give it better consistency. I do find that if I'm doing long rows of pearl and continental, it really causes my gauge to go all crazy. So that was good. Now, speaking of gauge, I did not do a swatch for this and yet the fit is absolutely perfect. I have sort of given up on gauge swatches, which might put me in a bad naughty corner with some knitters. But what I have found is that my gauge swatches do not reflect how I knit when I'm knitting a garment. And I don't know if you've found this too, but you can do a gauge swatch, get it perfect, and then when you go to knit the garment, it turns out to be something completely different. I just find, I don't know if it's the pressure of knitting a gauge swatch that causes me to um, change tighten or loosen or I'm more serious as opposed to when I'm actually knitting watching tv talking to the dog my husband doing whatever I'm doing so what I do is I start knitting the garment and I look at the at the this the stitches and the count as I'm going along and try it on as I'm going along and decide if I need to make an adjustment and most times I do not. I guess I've knit enough that it doesn't, um, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that I know what size should fit me, what it looks like. And I also know that if it is all going wrong, that I am going to stop and rip back. And that's the risk I'll take. But in general, I haven't found it a problem. Anyways, that's a long story about gauge swatching that you may or may not want to to have listened to. Um, but in the end, I'm really happy with this. I highly recommend it. I've never had pockets. I almost didn't do the pockets because I was worried that they would add bulk in my waist area, which I do not want any more bulk there. But actually, they don't add any bulk. They're kind of small, so I'm not sure I can put anything in them. But 
it was the first time I did pockets, so I'm very happy about that. Um, yeah, if you're looking for a cardigan, uh, I highly recommend you check out this A-list by Isabel Kramer. My next finished object are these basic rib socks by Kate Atherley. Uh, they're for my husband, George, size 13 feet. Yes, they're done. And they've been washed and worn. They don't get blocked. We don't do that for, um, for my husband's socks. Anyways, there you can see nice and close up what they look like. This is done in with my hand dyed using food coloring. They look a little blue. They're a bit greener in uh, real life, but uh, you get a sense of the speckling, which was done with colored sugar. And uh, yeah, super happy they fit and they're being put to good use. A great free pattern by Kate. I can highly recommend it. And if you're new to socks, it's a good one to try out. So if you're looking to try some socks, um, try these basic rib socks. Also, I do like the rib is um, knit three pearl one uh, design and I find these fit great. I've made these for myself and my grandson, my husband, and um, they really fit snuggy on your feet. So um, yeah, give them a try if you're looking for a basic um, sock pattern that isn't vanilla or you're new to sock knitting. This is a really well-written pattern by Kate and I highly recommend it. I've also finished uh, four hats that I knit. Um, I like to knit hats. Um, I like to do them between projects and these ones are for donation. I knit them throughout the year and then I drop them off at one of my local um, yarn shops for donation to um, people in the downtown east side. Um, yeah, so I've knit two snap hats. These are a pattern from uh, Tin Can Knits, a great pattern. And um, you're, you do it on the um, pearl bump side, which you can see there. I personally prefer the knit side, and I'll show you this. And what's great about this particular pattern, and the next pattern I'm gonna show you is, it's sort of a super bulky. And so what I do is I either hold um, a DK and two fingering or four fingering. And it makes these great color combos um, that we have here and here. So those are kind of fun. I, I really like kind of how they turn out. And then I uh, found a free pattern called the Snowy Day Hat. And it is from uh, Shoshana Safia. This is a free pattern and it comes out like that. So I think it was super bulky, but what I did was I just used four um, strands of fingering weight. And yeah, you get this kind of fun fabric and color choice. Um, I do kind of like this pattern better because the snap hat, you start with a smaller needle size and then you move up. So I don't know, I kind of think it slows me down. For this one, this is all done with a 10.5 and uh, I can just uh, not have to worry about changing needles and I'm just off to the races. And then I did this really fun, smaller pink one uh, with the pom-pom. So yeah, so I've made some hats, super cute. Um, and that free pattern also comes with mitts. So if you're into uh, wanting to try these out, again, a free pattern. I'll have all the information below. I'll have a picture up above. Um, you can check it out. And uh, yeah, two really good hat patterns that I highly recommend. I do them all the time and uh, yeah, uh, so hats. So that's it for my finished objects, but not bad. Um, so what have I been working on for my whips? Well, I have started the Anchor Summer Shirt by Petite Knits, and here it is. I have split um, for the sleeves, so the yoke is done. You can see, I mean, it's hard to see um, until it gets blocked because it's cotton. 
So, but you can sort of see what the pattern looks like. I'll put a picture on that I took of myself uh, wearing it. Um, yeah, so I'm knitting this out of my Sirdar Cotton DK, which is kind of funny because I've had this cotton and I've tried multiple times to make an, um, a shirt or a top or something. And every time I've just frogged it, I've not been pleased with how it turned out. But in this case, I think I found the match. Um, I love the color. Um, knitting with cotton is a special thing as knitters know. It just doesn't feel as good as um, wool on the hands, but um, I know I'm gonna love it when it's finished and it'll be great for the summer. I just have, I'm now I'm on the body endless stockinette, but it'll go by fast because again, it's DK and short sleeves, yay, I'm thrilled about that. So um, yeah, uh, haven't had any problems at all with the pattern. Although I would say this is not a pattern for a beginner because it makes several assumptions that you know about knitting and knitting a top down with some raglan. Um, there are spots in the pattern that are not, explicit is what I'll say and um, my suggestion is this is not a first sweater uh, knit for a beginner but if you've done um, sweater knitting before then it's perfect you'll know what to do um, it's a paid for pattern so I don't really want to give any details um, but yeah I'm going to be thrilled with this um, so hopefully next time you see it it will be finished and done and I'll be wearing it my next work in progress is socks. These are socks for myself. And this pattern is the Little Black Socks by Summer Lee. And as you can see, they are a, have a cable running down the front, the sides. And at the front, there's a bit of a texture. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there you go. And I do knit my socks two at a time on separate uh, magic loop um, and this is using my own hand dyed um, uh, yarn using acid dyes and you can see I got a pink theme going on yeah I like pink particularly pink socks um, but I have cast these on this is the third cast on of this same sock and the first time I cast it on it was a, a yarn I had that I don't know it was just too cutesy I didn't really like the yarn and then I cast it on in a gray which I love and um, I stopped because socks socks I have had to toss a number of my hand knit socks recently because they've worn out I am hard wearing on my socks that is just the way it goes. I'm not delicate. I do uh, not put them in the dryer. We wash them on delicate and then hang them to dry. But they wear out because I wear them. Because the whole point of, for me, is, is to use my socks. And I'm out running around, walking the dog, going on a hike. Um, I don't wanna be changing my socks. I want actually socks that will uh, wear during all these activities and go through the paces of our life and it was so heartbreaking to have to toss these socks and they were completely worn out there was no salvaging them and even then darning on the bottom of my sock that's just not going to happen so i thought why am i knitting socks that are just not going to last and aren't practical for me they're just not gonna work they look so beautiful they take a lot of time and then I just don't get this sort of enough enjoyment out of them. So I found in my stash, I had a ball of Regia sock yarn and right on the ball band, it said hard wearing. So I got to dyeing it. I dyed it, as you can see, and I'm knitting these socks. So we'll see how it goes. When I'm finished, we'll see how they last and, um, uh, we'll see what I think. You know, they're not as soft as Merino, but they seem they seem good to me. You know what? It's good enough. And if they're hard wearing, 
that works that combination will work for me they're not scratchy or anything so um, I'm hoping this will work out um, the pattern is a paid for pattern I had I'm the the nice thing about this pattern is it actually has three variations for it and I'm doing the uh, one with the uh, standard gusset and heel and heel and heel flap um, I don't know if I misread it but I have emailed the designer to ask about a potential uh, mistake in it and I will um, let you know what I hear when I hear back to see if there is a problem with it. I, as, a, as an experienced sock knitter, was able to figure it out, um, but maybe there's something that I misread in the pattern. So um, would be my only caution. And again, you'll notice that I have added my trusty markers because again, I'm watching TV and I forget. Next thing I know, I'm at the end of the row and I haven't done the cable pattern. Um, so I always put these in to kind of remind myself, stop, pay attention, do something. Um, I also, I haven't done a ton of cables and I um, am doing them cableless. I did start with the cable needle right at the beginning because I find when it's a really small start because you start the cables right away, right in the um, ribbing. Um, I found that uh, there's not enough to hold on to. And so the cable needle gave me more security because quite frankly, I was dropping those stitches and yeah, there was, it was not a good time in my house as I was very frustrated. So pulled out the cable needle, used it for a couple of rows and then I was all good. And I've only dropped one stitch since and I had to go back and get it. But uh, otherwise, things are going well, and um, yeah, and I'm pretty jazzed about the color of that. I used a bunch of different uh, reds and pinks I had, and then a bit of black that I watered down to give that kind of grayish, brownish color. So yeah, hopefully I'll have some socks to wear in about a week and um, can start testing out how hard wearing the Regia really is. And finally, for my last whip, it's the blanket. It's not done, it's a whip, but I'm getting there. This is the Scraptastic Blanket by Samantha Johnston, and <laughs> um, it's getting big, but I'm in the decreases. So I am, um, where am I? Okay, so last time we were all together, my marker is, Where's my marker? Where is it? It's way down there. I must have, oh, there it is. There's the marker and I've done all of this, which is a good amount and I'm on the decreases. So it feels like it's going by a lot uh, quicker. And as you can see, I'm just using all sorts of scraps from my stash. The the uh, blanket uses uh, two strands of fingering or sport or a single strand of DK and worsted. So I'm kind of just mixing and matching as I go. And um, yeah, and this is for my grandson, which I think he'll really love when it is done because it is super cozy. It's a great blanket. As I've said before, this is the second one I'm making, but um, yeah, what can I say? It's uh, It's got this beautiful I-cord edge, which gives it such a professional finish. And um, yeah, I'm happy with it. Um, I do not um, weave in ends. So I do the magic knot. I follow the video from Jane Richmond, which I'll link below in case you're interested. Um, so I just knot them all up. I found a couple of yarns um, look like they're gonna fail. So I just don't put them in this, quite frankly. Uh, I just rather do the knot and make sort of what they call a magic ball and off I go. And um, yeah, so I'm on this kind of wild um, orange that I dyed as part of my food coloring dyed video, which if you haven't seen, you can uh, check it out. It's on the, uh, I'll put it down below. And um, yeah, so, 
hoping to get this finished soon and then I'll probably just start another one because it's a lot of fun. I work on it just on Sundays as part of my scrappy Sunday and uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it being done and just keep on trucking. And finally, I have some future knitting to talk to you about today. I am wearing a finished object that I finished in oh near the end of 2019. This is the Le Pouf uh, cardigan. It was a free pattern by um, Beta Jacek. I hopefully I'm saying that properly. Probably not, and I'm sorry about that. Um, and this was a very popular pattern. And I've knitted out of this Tannis Fiber Arts fade set that I got at Knit City that year. This cardigan is just not wearable for me. It is very sloppy fitting for me. It keeps falling off my shoulders. It actually, it's not too big because it just barely closes. And also the sleeves are very, um, balloony which isn't good for me because I cook a lot and oh, I'm washing I'm washing my hands all the time and it doesn't seem like this is um, very practical for me and it's really sad because the yarn is beautiful I love it um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to frog this whole cardigan and I am going to repurpose the yarn and knit the City Limits sweater by Tannis of Tannis Fiber Arts. So it's kind of seems to me it's a match made in heaven. It's um, uh, it was meant to be. And for this, I'm not wearing it. It doesn't fit my body shape, and maybe that's what it is. It's just not the right. A garment for me and instead of just putting it in the closet and stare at it at how beautiful the knitting is and the yarn is and never wearing it I am going to do that which I've never done before so it's kind of scary to take all my hard work and just let it go but that's what I'm going to do so um, yeah I just wanted to share that and anyone who's done something like that feel free to give me any advice or comments or encouragement because it is kind of sad to uh, let this go. But it seems to me that I want to have a sweater um, that I will wear and everything I can see about the city limits. I have the pattern. It looks like a really good uh, knit. The feedback is good. And um, so I'm going to go for it. If you recall from my previous podcasts, I've been working on the Oakla Roots block party quilt. And when we last left off, I had completed all of the quilt blocks and had to attach the sashing and the borders. And I have completed that. And yeah, I went with a very wild uh, fabric for the border and the sashings because I sort of thought it had a, a lot of different patterns and blocks. It's very scrappy, which I like in knitting, so I thought I would like in quilting as well. This is huge. I'm going to put a picture of the whole thing in because you're I can't even hold it up. It's crazy. But this is uh, done by Okla Roots, and I'm just waiting for the next step in the process to make the sandwich and do the quilting. So yeah pretty uh pretty excited about that and learning a lot about making quilt blocks and there were 12 different quilt blocks so there was lots to learn and matching colors and lots of mistakes but it's going to uh, be a lot of fun when it's finished and um, yeah i can't i cannot wait and maybe next time that we're together i might even have it finished so yeah yeah, it's been really fun. I've enjoyed it. One thing I really want to interject into this is that Jess of Okla Roots does great videos um, 
there is a video for every single step of the way here. So if you're interested in learning about quilting, I really want to uh, recommend that you do that. Now, one thing I will say, last time I did my video, I was raving about the uh, uh, hack of using the um, tablecloths to make sort of a design wall to hold it up. Well, I'll put the picture up. Um, <laughs> that it didn't really work for me in the end uh, it kept falling down and I don't know why my painters tape was like really good um, I don't know what I was doing wrong but that hack did not end up working for me on something as big as this it could have been the weight of it it, it does get kind of heavy but I just yeah it was so depressing I actually stopped the quilt for a while to just uh, regroup but then eh, I picked myself up and all the pieces off the floor and got this completed but uh, yeah that uh, hack did not work that well for me since I got my sewing machine um, mainly I wanted to make masks and um, now I think I want to make bags um, I did make one um, uh, project bag for my knitting uh, called the dodgy bag um, which I'll show you one day it was a good first attempt but now I sort of have my next project in mind and it is the Naziao pouch by country cow design or Naziao pouch by country cow designs it's a free pattern and it is uh, seems to be very detailed so I'm kind of excited to do it I bought the fabric so for the outside I got this super fun I think it's kind of like girl power fabric so I'm excited to use that it's quite fun and then of course on the inside yarn yeah so those are the two fabrics I've got and that's what I'm planning to give it a try as a first uh, pattern. I guess it's very beginner friendly. I have a zipper. I've never sewn with a zipper before so I'm pretty excited to try that and there are two types of interfacing I get to use and if all goes well I'll have a great pouch I can use and then I can try something else or find out I don't really like to sew pouches and then I'll stop and work on something else. <music> Okay, now let's talk about food. Uh, first recipe up is the fluffy Japanese pancakes. Have you heard about these? They're all the rage on TikTok, and then a lot of uh, YouTubers were trying to make them, and some were successful and some weren't, but even the ones that were successful, they took forever. But then I saw a, a video by Anne Reardon of How to Cook That out of Australia. And uh, she showed that basically the recipe wasn't doable, um, although others have proven it can be doable, but she came up with a separate recipe, or her own recipe of how to make these in the oven. And um, I made them and they were great. Now I made one substitution in a recipe. She called for egg white powder, which I don't even know what that is but I had meringue powder so I substituted that in and it worked great and I think it's this it's part of a stabilizer for the recipe and uh, it worked it made them a touch sweet but if you've got kids or you've got my husband they uh, he thought it was great and kids would think it was good and you can counterbalance that with some tart fruit whatever um, uh, condiments that you would like to try them with. What I loved about these is that it's easy to scale the recipe up. So if you're making a bunch, you make them in the oven and you kind of pile them up um, and uh, check out her recipe of what you do. And I'll, I'll throw in a couple of pictures that I have of it, but you can uh, do them in the oven. So and keep them warm in, a, you know, in a low oven as your if you have to make more. Um, but um, they turned out really really good and I think that they're worth trying and if you've been curious about fluffy Japanese pancakes give this a go I think you'll uh, be pleased with it and substitute in meringue powder which is much more easily found but if you can find egg white powder then you're all set and you can follow the exact recipe speaking about TikTok fads 
I had no idea that grape tomato and feta pasta was this big thing. And my friend Della said that she was trying it and I'm like, trying what? So of course I looked at it and um, yeah, everyone was making it. I found a recipe from the Washington Post that said, yes, this really turns out good. So I tried it and I agree, it is good. Now we didn't use pasta, we used it, we used spaghetti squash instead and it was excellent. In fact, I think I would like it better than pasta, but I know for all you pasta lovers that uh, wouldn't be an easy argument to make. But I make my spaghetti squash in the Instant Pot so it's super quick and works every single time. I've put some pictures here and if you were on the fence about the TikTok grape tomato feta craze, I say try it. Um, we loved it and we'll be making it again. It'll go into our regular rotation. Last month our dog Sherman Wolf and his cousin Jack turned seven. Uh, my friend she has a uh, Jack and the two of them are crazy cousins who adore each other and in these these crazy times of course we had to have a dog birthday party by zoom so for the birthday party we have to have cupcakes so i dropped off cupcakes at uh, our grandsons and uh, my friend janice who has jack and we had them as well and what i made was brown eyed baker's ultimate chocolate cupcakes and these are fantastic the um this recipe is so good it's so well written um, you just follow it along do what it says and you are going to have 12 fantastic chocolate cupcakes these ones i can't think of a single thing i would change about this recipe um, so i've linked it below you should make this for sure if you love chocolate cupcakes it makes 12 which was perfect for us even my dad got some You'll notice on the picture that there are also some uh, rainbow cupcakes because the grandson wanted um, rainbow birthday cake sprinkles and uh, so we accommodate him. But he was missing out because the chocolate was fantastic. And uh, this is a super great recipe I've made so many times. Can't say it highly enough. I've probably gone on and on too much already for it, but mmm. Um, and if you saw one of my other videos, I had some leftover icing so I can make some more and uh, or just eat the icing. I don't know. It, there, it's an excellent um, recipe. I highly recommend it. Just a quick update on my ongoing sourdough saga. Bob the starter is just not lively enough, unfortunately. So um, I still have them. I'm still feeding them. I'm still dreaming one day that Bob will be enough. But in the meantime, um, we have Paige. Paige is a starter that came from a bakery. We had a Bob that came from the bakery, but we tossed him sometime in the summer when we thought we'd never make sourdough again. Now I want to make sourdough. And luckily a friend, friend of a friend had Paige, um, her name is Paige. Um, and so now that's a starter's name and we have it in our fridge and we made sourdough. We tried to match Bob, but Bob was too dense. Bob didn't make it, but Paige is great. So we're gonna keep going with Bob, but Paige turned out excellent. We had some yummy uh, garlic toast with her and um, we will now have sourdough regularly and uh, we used the recipe that she recommended. I'll put it below. I think it was um, on ba binging with Babish or basics with Babbage. I'll put it below. I don't think uh, I know which one it was. The recipe is pretty complicated. Uh, it was a bit more than I wanted to get going on, um, but the results were great. Um, but I found the one that we had used from the bakery originally, and I'm going to try it next. So stay tuned, a sourdough happening in our house uh, with our new starter, Paige. And finally, how would a list of recipes not be complete without banana bread? 
So I have this recipe that is from the 80s. It's Susan Mendelson of Lazy Gourmet in Vancouver. She had a recipe or she has a recipe called Ridiculously Simple Banana Bread and it really is. It is great. We make it all the time. I'm actually going to be releasing a video of making it from beginning to end for beginners because it's a great recipe that has um, simple ingredients, it's easy to do, it always seems to work out for us, and it's our favorite. We don't get complicated. We want base, we love banana bread, but we want it to be basic, we want it to be easy. And um, I thought I would share it for beginners that um, want to try banana bread but um, may not see it from end to end, but maybe just watching some quick clips on. Um, on other platforms that may not show them everything that they should do. So uh, stay tuned for that and we will have some banana bread, um, mm, more banana bread in our house. How can that be bad? Well, that's about enough of an update for this time. I want to thank you for watching and being with me and hearing all about all my crafty retirement activities. It's been one year since I've been retired. It's been a year for everybody. How memorable has it been? Um, but uh, things are getting better and I hope you're doing better. Uh, appreciate it if you would subscribe, like, comment. Would love to hear from you. And until next time, let's all keep crafting.